Hello everyone, thank you very much for being here today. Again, today is um, a very special art talk uh, with one of my heroes in the world of design. His name is David Gill. He has opened the doors for many designers and actually create pretty much the world superstar designers um, and create also a career that have um, motivate many young designers around the world to work on his um, on their careers and at the same time um, you know it's just a great source of inspiration for us designers and it's an incredible privilege to be able to talk to him today he's actually joined us from Malta he's in vacation um, he's based in England and have um, an historical gallery in, uh, in England. So we're gonna create a contact with him. Uh, we're going to just reach out to him right now. And we're gonna enjoy his knowledge, which is uh, incredible. Um, that's great, I can see wonderful people here. C4R, the great collection of Ella Cisneros, Luca Artioli, and many other designers. Thank you very much for being here today, we are waiting for him. Um, we're gonna discuss not only his career, but also um, his latest book, which is in my coffee table. Um, it's a book that describes how much he has support the world of uh, architects, designers, from Gio Ponti to Saha Hadid, to many other ones. So he's pretty much a person that I, um, cost constantly look up to and I respect very much. So here he is. Let's see, it's connecting. David, how great. Thank you so much for giving us this time. Thank, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I try to explain to people, you know, way before how important um, is, has been your career and your patronage on the art uh, for architects, designers, and what a great source of inspiration um, is um, everything that you do. You're very daring <laughs> in everything that you select. <laughs> um, and I have to say also a thank you very much to Ana Dominguez, a mutual friend, and a great writer from Spain. They give us this incredible connection. Um, so I really wanted to express my gratitude for that. Welcome Thank very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very honored to be sharing with you this chat. I do hope that we are able to enlighten all those that perhaps are joining us, that they're not perhaps um, know much about my work. Uh, but uh, I'm here to obviously satisfy all the questions and, and answer anything that you may have selected to really show about my work. Thank you. Yes, David, we want to start always from the beginning. We met casually a long time ago through our dear friend Saha Hadid and then uh, to Anna. Uh, but, you know, the evolution, the constant evolution that you have in your uh, amazing career take you to places uh, and, and to people's mind, you know, to, to, how do you get connected with that sort of I think in most, in most cases, of course, you know, one kind of makes choices and, and you kind of like information is very important and, and obviously a point of view, what, what, what your direction really is and, and where it takes you. Because I think, I think you have to make choices. I think you, you can't really just like, well, in my case, perhaps it's in everybody else's, um, we have a, a point of view and now direction. And, and how it works or how it has worked for me, my, my journey, it is like very much wanting to do something. And in the case of Saha, I knew Saha for many, many years before we began to work together. So I think you really, in my case, you see the passion of their work and, and, and what sort of inspiration and, and what sort of excitement you really get from that. And then if there is a, a reciprocal relationship dialogue where, where you can really work together or do something because Saha, I mean, being a majestic, I mean, it's like a wish with us, but and, and kind of incredible mind in, in, in her act kind of really inspired me very much, but also kind of made me think, 
how does it translate into furniture? Because obviously, it's not just that I'm not taken by the fact that it's a great architect, perhaps will satisfy or will do something that really, um, that I will really be willing or happy with. And so we have many dialogues and, and in many occasions, many laughter. I mean, she would kind of propose something sometimes, which was obviously very avant-garde and very cutting edge. And I would say to Zaha, we laughed a lot together. So I said, but Zaha, I mean, this thing will laugh. Cardboard, it will just collapse the minute we make it. Because she was always experimenting. So, so, I mean, I would ask her for a sideboard. And she would say, great, we are going to make a sideboard and we'll put a tap on it. And I said, that is not a sideboard, it's a sink. So we had many dialogues to arrive at the genius and the work did with me, uh, did together. Because at one point, you know, I had been talking to her for many years. And, and, and then I sort of, I thought, well, this is not going to happen. And I said to her, I am going to be sure finale. I'm doing a project. And she said to me, come to my office tomorrow. And in fact, that's what you're showing there now, the new information. So when I actually also excited her in some way by sort of saying the Venice Biennale, she herself sort of let's do something together. And I the new information, which is partly on the wall now, these incredible shelves. Uh, and she also asked me when I went to see her, sort of said, what do you have in mind? What do you want? And I sort of said, I actually want a library. I, I want, and I was thinking at the time, a library being a building, because the library is attached to the wall, so she would have to really do, not just like a standing piece that ever it is, but it would be more, and that is really what my mind was captivated by. And she sort of said, no problem. And she actually, well, I mean, she has done millions of drawings and sketches and imagination. She had something which was the information, amazing drawing of us. And there it was, and I sort of thought, great. So we began this project, and this is again how far things go, because I sort of said, well, this is the building. We have Scuola San Rocco, which was a beautiful um, scuola within a church in Venice, a majestic room, Venetian, huge. But great, fantastic. So when we began to make the piece, I went full of confidence, with the drawings, with the maquettes, not paying attention to detail. And of course, these pieces were gigantic. I mean, the eight meters long and nine meters long and 10 meters long. So in this room setting, this palace, it looked majestic. But I said, Saha, <laughs> we are not going to be able to place these shelves very easily other than show them. But you see, she had this kind of grandeur in her mind, which I do sometimes have this craziness too. But there's also a reality. I mean, it's a, in, in terms of having a gallery and it has to be commercial as to these pieces. Ultimately, they, you want to translate them for an audience. This is the room, majestic, amazing. But you want them to translate for an audience, the imagination, and ultimately to really, to be lived with, to, to really enter a space or a home. So we had to redo it again. <laughs> well, yeah. for the domestic, but we had but, to- But I think, I think it's, it, it, there is what this, um, pieces that people are going to be able to enjoy at home or their private collections. It's right. what the gallery, the gallery, gallery's point of view, curate Correct. the artist's point of view to make it practical. You know, and Correct. that is what I have to applaud constantly of you, that you take these, these dreamers of impossible things and, and nurture them with such a level of delicacy because, you know, you cannot just go too much because they the sensitivity and the thing. No. So that's a magic touch. <laughs> no, it was, it was kind of like, I mean, one day we spend the whole day testing each other. Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe, yes, no, yes. What do you think? Why? Why not? Mm -hmm. And then at the end, I don't know, seven o'clock, I mean, it's at nine in the morning. She said to me something like, well, if you means to you, so much to you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it really was. You know, she was the master of testing. You know, I, I remember she teach me how to test. Yeah. We have fingers and that they at the pool at the Delano and they're all Nokia. And you say, Jay, see, you have to test. This is the future. And I didn't believe it. You know, I was from the beeper generation. So she was really on top of so many projects via text. But this piece, there's one special thing about this piece, because obviously we showed it at the time that Karl Lagerfeld worked with Saha and they did this pod, which oh. came then to the world, you know, to exhibit. Chanel, Saha. So there was a moment in time, I think it was 2007, the Venice Biennale. And then soon after, 
you know, we had um, the producers from the James Bond movie calling us up and saying that they wanted to use it in Rio de Janeiro in oh, one of them in one of the films. But of course, we thought about it. They were going to destroy the piece in the film. And we thought, we can't do that before the piece is covered around the world. We can't have this piece destroyed. It would look like, I don't know, too much of a happening. Yeah. So, like that. <laughs> but that, that, that daring conversation, when you establish personal relationship with the artist and then you go and curate it. I, I wanted to go back a little bit at the beginning. How you, an Spaniard, got beat by sort of that design situation in your life? How did you start your career? Well, I think I was always very interested, not so much where he's born. Of course, you have roots and you have your parents to bring you up and hopefully to, to I don't know, to push you forward and to, to let you shine if that is what you want to be or, or, or encourage you on your path. I was kind of looking at the world, even when I was in Spain, I was very young, uh, but, but I already, at the age of nine, I was kind of questioning, I sort of said things like, well, why are we living here? And, and I remember my mother, what do you mean? We're living in Barcelona, Madrid, because we lived between, so my access us. And I said, no, no, I mean, Paris, New York, London. So I think, you already looked at me and, well, this is something we'll have to work with. And, and I was kind of looking always at, I don't want to say the superlative, but, but at the, at what's happening in terms of, in the real world, what is happening in terms of creativity, in terms of which cities have the architecture, which cities have the theatres, music. You know, groups have always formed in, in capitals. The 20th century Paris yeah. was kind of a of creativity. In the 50s, New York, or part before that Rome. So really, you have to really go where it's at if you really want to kind of um, be creative, be kind of explosive, if you like, because then you will have an audience. If you should remain, and perhaps being a Spaniard, maybe I have these genes that Goya and Buñuel between, I don't know. But do you, do you think Paris and London choose you or you choose London? I chose London. At the time, London was the flower power. It was all this kind of like amazing time, the music, all this kind of the Beatles. I mean, it was, it was time going out in London, which was kind of very youthful and very creative. So that was the place. I mean, it, 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 no, that was the place. And, and, and I did go to Paris for some years. And Paris was, if you like, um, a foundation. It was much more uh, history established. But the excitement really was London. Yeah. yeah I remember I went, I, 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 when I went to London many, many years ago, Saha sent me to see your first space where you showed the Matthew Barney. All uh, oh, right. Well, I, oh, yes. I, I, I can't believe this is happening. I know. I can't. Well, yeah. No, that was in Vauxhall. You know, I turned Vauxhall. Vauxhall became a installation space almost because I invited. Um, also, I did this big installation by also by Paul McCarthy. Paul McCarthy. Was, sorry, you're right. Paul, Paul McCarthy. Paul McCarthy. And I had Pino, Arno. I had all these great major collectors coming to see this this installation, the Bank House, which was like this train. This it was amazing. dirty. It was really. Everybody in the world was talking about it because it was so dirty, you know, and so totally. dirty. Totally. But I mean, the amazing thing, the curiosity of, um, I don't know, you know, it's like opening people's eyes because it's kind of, you question many things and you sort of say, how a coyote have these guns and how can they be in this bank house? But, you know, Paul McCarthy is always about this. He's always, he's fucked up this and fucked up that and a poke in the eye and a poke whatever. But I mean, it's like... But at the time, his art and what was happening, it was very, very strong. It was very powerful, it was very present. And, and for my, um, uh, I know, my stimulus and also the, my kind of creativity, I kind of had contemporary art on one hand and design on another. So I was kind of looking at both in tandem, uh, kind of being, for me, being one. You know, it's, it's like, if you really look, I mean, Houses have always had paintings on the wall and, and furniture on the floor. So I think this idea also 
of being experimental, if you like, you know, furniture that was being made. Even today, I mean, when you put a Sahari table, the liquid glacier today yeah. in Syria, I mean, it's, it's a mind blowing. People sort of like look and they sort of say, wow. I mean, yeah. when, when La Ligue, not the, the, on the next day, thinking, my God, we've got So, I mean, when you were with great minds, with great artists, you know, with these pieces that they, not, they're not just only today, they're, they're kind of icons of the future. They, 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 they are provocative. When you enter a place, you question, you sort of say, what is this? Yeah, and that's, that's what, I, what I, 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 I honestly believe that you have really um, were part of that generation that um, create the work of contemporary I, functional art. I was know? the first that opened contemporary. I mean, it's like when I opened the first contemporary gallery, because before I was doing period, Jean-Michel Franck, the names, Ruhlmann, yeah. Eileen, all the masters, which everybody at the time were collecting, and today then beyond the gods. I mean, they're kind of obviously, you know, what so, but I thought, no, I can't go this way because I, I was very contemporary, so I have to do contemporary. Another time I read an article in the Times, uh, a double page about Garusta Bonetti, this, the San Pablo, and I sort of thought I have to meet them. So I kind of switched completely from this kind of established, secure, 30s, 40s furniture, there they are to these contemporary guys, and I went to see them in Paris, and, and we began this kind of new, uh, new path, because they had shown in Paris the year before, when I showed them in London. And of course, this was kind of totally new, again, to love this amazing, this piece, the Kabakuro, this became an icon, because there's a publication of a chest of drawers, and this was included with the 18th century, with the Renaissance, with the 15th century, because this piece is a classic, I mean, there are many, Obviously, in the course of one's work, but I mean, this is a great piece. Great yeah. Piece. No, I, 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 I took the, the liberty with you, with your great assistant Rachel. To, that she sent me lots of material to select up a little bit of everything for all your children's. I would call them because they are your sons and daughters that you protect and defend and push you, in a way that is unbelievable. You see, talking about adventure and talking about creativity and talking about no boundaries. I mean, that this image here, which was a collection, it, it was kind of, if you like, a homage. I mean, the Russians weren't even sort of buying. It was an inspiration on history in, in kind of the idea. So the idea was really about the egg. It was about the Fabergé egg. But, you know, we did this St. Petersburg, this humongous, amazing, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, it could be a, 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 an etching by Dura of the hippopotamus. Yeah. Instead, it's St. Petersburg. And then, you know, we're going back. That is, again, them. So all these pieces, and, and the extraordinary thing is, I mean, it's, it comes, I see them today, and for me, they haven't dated. Absolutely. You know, I, they, I see they stand today as a strong when they were when they were created. Yeah. You made them also collectible because, you know, you, you guide these amazing dreamers to do limited editions and to make absolutely perfection and all these pieces. And that is the great mind of an art dealer, you know, to yeah. be able to, to guide them and to, and to elevate, you know, their product. And, and my I'm, I'm, is talking I'm really that I had the support of the young and also, shall we say, the very conservative some ways, ladies and gentlemen that we can look there in the 18th century, in the century of furniture, and suddenly they opened their eyes because these were fundamentally collectors of, of kind of, if you like, serious collectors. And then when they discovered, you know, what, this world, they get hooked. Absolutely. <laughs> and you, you discovered, like, Sebastian Rachnovich. Is... Rachnovich. Oh. Yeah. Tell us about him. He, well, he's another kind of, uh, it's an, um, another amazing mind in terms of his, of his own, so to say, uh, philosophy. I mean, because he's always been working in a computer. He was always a stretching. You know, if it was a chair in the computer, he stretched it in the computer, so it became almost digital. And, and he finished it in a way so that the seat was spread out, you know, it became linear, and then the seat, so it was always a stretch. So he's always been working with a twist, with, with a, with a with a stretch, and also the way that he combines the computer and then they finish him, because in these pieces that we see here, he began to really work with bronze. 
but it's still kind of moving it in a way that is though it's kind of like and twisted it's always computer but then the finish he always takes the the element of the embroidery of, of the craftsman so they're very kind of um they're really beyond objects they're really artworks yeah. yeah they are quite fantastic i think it's level of craftsmanship also they're, as you mentioned you know they are very contemporary modern minimal contemporary it, it, but then he just, it's, like, it's like old couture pretty much in the pieces Correct. I mean, the computer is there, but then when you finish them, it's completely haute couture. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad. I'm just going to go, you know, sadly, I will, you know, I will be talking to you all day. But, you know, Instagram gives us only an hour. So I wanted to be, be able to take care of all your children. So, or oh, one of them. This, this is Jorge Pardo. And Jorge Pardo is, is, he's an architect. He's an artist. He's a painter. He's actually, he's a master mind. I mean, I mean, some artists, they remain in one line. Jorge can create a universe. He's someone, I mean, this is a room that he did of mirrors in the gallery, but he has created environments. He has created rooms that you enter the rooms, not unlike in a sense, not comparison, but unlike Louis Bourges, uh, uh, um, Kusama makes these rooms. Jorge can create an environment that when you enter that room, you are totally in that world. And, and I mean, there are some publications of the way that he's done. He lives in Mexico, but he's, he's a genius. And again, the computer, it plays a tremendous part. This is the first time that he did painting on the furniture and he hung all the furniture off the floor. It was hanging or <laughs> suspended from the wall, all the pieces. So I didn't know what I was getting. We had a dialogue. He knew what he was doing. So this was the show. And it's the first time that he did painting, which was again computer generated. That is a self portrait of Jorge. Yeah. Uh, I think they're bigger than live. You know, they're absolutely. All the, all the pieces sold out. I mean, all the pieces sold to collectors. It was amazing. Amazing. And one, it, one of the things that I see also in all these artists is how they use, uh, uh, even they go very contemporary, how they treasure the handmade thing still yeah. you know, it's no longer the the product that goes out of the machine and that's it you know this is actually people who are really after they design the piece they engineer the piece they apply handmade products on it and that's very applaudable well i think we're lucky in that respect that you know, they are not losing the craftsmanship and more and more they're looking into that because obviously at one point everything was hand drawn but now the computer somehow is taking over to some extent some of the most successful other totally successful but here um sebastian Ezauris, it's very difficult to Ezauruzid. um again he was with computers very much but all, he's always very in touch with uh, uh technology technology oh. and he's kind of really uh, and, and this this collection that he did for me i mean we're developing new work it was very much how well versed he is in history, that we're so familiar with these kind of heads if we go to museums or, 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 you know, but he creates this contemporary, I call them temples almost, because they're invading your interior in a kind of, in a way that is totally, but he did a they're piece. very magical. Yes, yes. He did a piece, I don't know if we have a photograph of that, which he was like, um, with all the, all, all the uh, reliefs of the, um, um, it, it was uh, not the Parthenon. And it's amazing because it's almost like you're taking the, the Elgin marbles and put it in front of a cabinet. It's totally yeah. magic. Yeah. yeah. And you know, your website is so amazing. So I invite everybody to go to your website or to your shop page, which is unbelievable. And they can see lots of the artist pages. You know, I we're talking about. Following you that I don't really. The artist. And, and this is Daniel Libeskin, which is, which is an amazing man. I mean, he's like so generous, so kind you know, lovely to work with, and his wife, Nina, I mean, they work together. Um, we had lovely conversations. And, you know, it's like, how do collaborations happen? Well, you start with a dialogue. And then it's three years later, <laughs> three years later, we decide that we are doing it. Because in the process, there's this kind of is a process. And it's a process of dialogue, what it is that you're going to do, what is going to achieve. And it's, it's kind of, in many ways, the dialogue goes two ways. It's, it's like, Many times they say to me, what do you want? But it's not what I want, it's what they want. They just are asking me, what do I want to really sort of see what is going on, what's happening? But sometimes, sometimes, well, I, I hope so, they do kind of take a lead. Because I think if you think an architect, it's just like you give them a commission. And a commission is like you're going to do, this is a great, great console, amazing. 
the intricate, I mean, these are kind of like each line to me is like a line in a building. It's, it's not one, they move in every angle. It's not, they're not as straight. They move to the right, they move to the left, they move all kind of polished by hand and a very difficult piece to then be stable. So as many as they're not apparent that they really, they're very successful and, and something like that, it took almost two years to, this is, this is a genius. Wow. This, this chair, this chair is the sky chair is just fantastic because it's fa carbon fiber and, and it's polished steel, but every angle is different. Every angle is different. And the carbon fiber is just like sitting there, or like it's just sitting, it's not attached in any way. I think this is a, this is a real historical future collection piece, yeah. this one. When you start that curatorial project that you do, talking to these masterminds and these, these, these minds that can design anything, because that's, that's what an artist does. They can do anything. You know, you, of course, very softly trying to let them tell, tell everything that they have in their mind. But at the same time, you always keep in mind that you have to have functional art. And right. pieces. They are, you know, something for the table, something for the living room, something for the wall. It, it right. is, is, is something that you do. And, and how did, what is the reaction? They really wanted to see their work as a utilitarian work? I think they listen to you, but I think they want to do what they want to do. <laughs> <laughs> you, do you do whatever as long as it's my way. <laughs> now, the thing is, I sort of said, we're talking about this, I sort of said, well, the angle has to be right. We have to be able to, well, but of course, this chair is so magnificently beautiful that it's not necessarily about sitting because it's, it's fiber, car carbon fiber. But when you sit, you can sit on the chair. What I'm sort of saying, it, it it is not inviting to look at, but what you look at, it's a monument. It's a monument. And many of them, you know, are, in, in, you know, like David Chipperfield that I get the chance to meet when I was designing a discotheque here in Miami, when he did um, the short club here, which was such a spectacular creation of minimals, you know, so, what a great man. Well, you know, he, he's that kind of a minimalist in a way that he will not do something which just has one line too many. So he takes not some, all, forever. I mean, to decide to do something, he really has to decide to do it because he's almost thinking, I believe, is that needed to be done? One more of that, does it need to be done? So he, he synthesizes it to kind of the elements that would be very pure. And these shells, with the magic of them is that they all have got, it doesn't necessarily show here, but they all have got this frosted rib glass. So when you close these shelves, you can put anything you want inside and it's like a ghost. So you have got these shelves and they contain whatever you want and you don't really sort of see it because it's the rib that hides it. So it's a magical idea to live with these shelves in that way. Kind of, Absolutely. You don't really they, 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 they just create magic, you know. We're going to go back now to talk to a dear friend of our, ours, Michelle Oka-Donner, which is I think, one, of, one of the most wonderful experiences to be with Michelle and her love to New York and see her work and or, or walk with her in the beach in Miami. And she just pick up things and, 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 and on the back of her, just carry on little things that she pick up for, the, for, the, for our walk in the beach. Tell us about your collaboration with her because it's very recent, no? It's very recent. In fact, I was... I, I was introduced to Michelle uh, by a very good friend and, uh, and, and we went to her home. Um, Peter Fleissig is here. And so we went to see her. Um, and of course she knew about me, I knew about her, but we met. So of course I enter her world and her world is totally mystical. And, and of course it's, it's the same thing. You enter a mystical world and then you enter a dialogue, a dialogue and how are you going to walk out of that? What is going to be? What is going to happen? And, and Michelle is, like all of them, by artists. Again, you know, they know what they want to show. They really do. But, I mean, she had these majestic pieces that she, she always does herself. Every single piece. She's there. I mean, this, this install, she did the whole installation. She painted all, all those panels. She was actually in the studio in London. She did in London. She painted, and it was magical. I mean, it's everybody wanted the walls, everybody wanted the floor. I mean, it's like we were asking right, left, and center. And, but, but it was with her, I suppose, I don't know if it's the masculine, the 
man and woman. It was very much about um, understanding each other and having a relationship together. It was about uh, seeing both point of view to be kind of on the same level. And I think we found that. And, and I think um, we have very good conversations. And, and sometimes we even go to the opera together. <laughs> yeah, it's a great company. I adore her. She's a Miamian and, and I get to yeah. meet her here and then in New York. I love to sit in that big round table she have, she have in her kitchen in her loft in New York, which is a spectacular. You know, it, it, I, I don't have every yeah. yeah, even the candles, they adore my house. I love the candles. They're great. They're really yeah. great. Yeah, and your exhibition was like a year and a half ago, no? Uh, I think probably now, because I, I did an exhibition, I did two exhibitions in London, um, and I did, and I then showed her, it was like a full show, it was in pad, and this was in San Francisco, so I think it must have been four years ago, the first show. Yeah, I'm going through all your children's, <laughs> and here you have this couple. Well, like, so, so young and dynamic and creative and... and you know, when you have got, I mean, it's, it's of course, I mean, one is creative all one's life, but I mean, when one is a certain age, one is almost impatient, you know, it's, it's kind of because it's like everything is burning and it's, it's kind of growing inside you every day. So every day is another idea. And I remember a lot of the times they sort of say, you know, Patrick, I'll come to the studio and I go and they've got something laid on the floor for, for seeing my reaction. And of course, I sort of say, wow, this is amazing. And they already have a plan, and they sort of say, <laughs> out of this, this and that and the other. Seldom I have gone and sort of said, I don't like, it's not about like or not like. Of course, I mean, sometimes, you know, it's, you're not motivated, but, but, but I mean, they're always investigating. They're always experimenting, investigating. I mean, this piece is kind of, it's an iconic piece again. I mean, it's like, it was what actually, material, David? it's actually, it's, it's a, it's high density foam, which has been tested, you know, against the fire and all these kind of things. And then it's kind of, it has got some lining, you know, and, and then ultimately flocked. But I mean, it's kind of, you know, these kind of materials they have to be tested for all kinds of eventualities, you know, not just fire retardant or so they meet all the criteria. Um, in fact, it piece by that. And then the, the acrylic, which is like, it's all this plastic that is floating in the seas. We collect it. Up eight pieces to last forever. <laughs> you know, kind of, you put a good use to actually and not a terrible use that, you know, we are in the world. Then you have, this is all made with cardboard, this table. This is, again, is recycling. It's all the cardboard that is kind of seen recycling, making this piece in bronze. Yeah, they're absolutely, you know, to be so young and to be so incredibly curious, about the use of material and also in the recycle and the thing. It makes them very special. They're very hot now. You have an exhibition with them, no? Yes, we, do. we, we are going to sort of have, uh, well, we had one. I think we, we have plans to do something in New York soon. But COVID just like it slowed us for the whole year. I mean, COVID, I mean, it's like the whole world. I mean, let's hope that we are all going to be very together, very sensible and, and, and we'll, you know, we'll overcome it. But with being sensible is, is a very good thing. But I mean, this year, it just slows the whole world. I mean, it's, it's all this yeah. exhibition, no point. I mean, that is why what we are doing now, talking like this, is going to be the future. It's going to be the future. And, and, and but I love the fact that you don't leave a country without discovering. Now you're in Malta. I'm sure you are searching. <laughs> well, well, totally. I was today discussing something quite... I was in the Spanish embassy with you. It was, it was a curious thing. And this is Milena, Milena Muskis. And Milena Muskis is a great, great artist. I mean, she's not just a sculptor, she's also a painter. These, these are the, some, the pieces that she did for my exhibition in London, which yeah. of course worked for that almost two years, because I mean, these pieces that they're kind of like, you sculpted, turned together, and they take, you know, from the process, one piece can take maybe, uh, you know, because it's obviously fired, many firings can take three to four, five months. But I mean, the show was quite a big show. So it was two years. And then she did a series of paintings. Like, you know, these are all painted. I mean, they all had painted. And the other side is another 
much. So the story of work that she did yet again, that is the other side, she was groundbreaking. And, and the inspiration was very much the days, so this Mexican when she was living in LA and, and um, merry around and fun fairs and all the kind of like things that she saw in the beach. It was a bit of a messy life. As she they're, like, up, they're like up, totems of happiness with a little bit of kid hiring and traditional Mexican correct. items. The very yeah. beautiful. Yeah, well, we're gonna go through and not, of course, not not a last. Day, and and leaving one of my favorites for the last. <laughs> People what? like they found. Let me just take a look and going through everything, and then we're gonna talk about this genius, Matia. <laughs> no, Matia Bonetti. You know, I tell you, Matia Bonetti. I worked with with him. I mean, at the time. Since the year 2000, he no longer worked with Elizabeth, they separated, but I worked with him since 1988, and, and it's really curious because when I did the talk at the Cooper Hewitt, um, and I do believe that, I mean, it's like I see artists today, you know, creating with their hands, sculpting with their hands, and, and of course, you know, I'm totally impartial, you know, just because it's not here. But somebody sort of put it, across and it wasn't me that was said that is the Giacometti of today. It is. This is George Lindemann dining room. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's a, George, yes, George Lindemann. That, that was in Miami. Yes, it's George Lindemann, <laughs> a, a very avid collector. Yeah. And, and this, this actually, I mean, this piece is, is the, uh, the um, Abbey Stables. They're magical. They're amazing. And I love the, the just a position between Pardo and Matia. You know, because yeah. in a way, these two minds are just an explosion of, explosion you, of movement. You see, the idea, I mean, I have got, I don't know, this kind of sense of... We lost you for a second. Interruption. No, sorry. You know, I, like, I like kind of like this idea of we're just mixing, mixing great things together. Yeah. Plus, I, I believe, you know, the work of Matias has such a great sense of humor in a way. You know, so they bring you happiness. They, they just sit in, and you just want to explore what is inside everywhere. Drawings. When you look at the drawings, it's really like Walt Disney, Mickey Mouse. I mean, it has got this element of, as you sort of say, happiness, almost childlike, almost like a toy. And then when you translate them, they're kind of, as you can see there, they're quite witty and they're witty. And, and they're kind of like, they make you smile sometimes you know, as well. But that translation between the drawing to the reality is a big, big passage. I mean, like this, this chair, I know what is happen, what will going to happen with these pieces in terms of history. And sometimes history takes longer than other times, but, but they're kind of magnificent pieces. This yeah. is called... You're announcing a big show with him. Now it's going to happen when it's opening. And, and I believe Ana Dominguez is, is, is working with you on the writing, right? The book and Anna is writing the text because Anna is an amazing writer. I mean, she's kind of like she's got um, this is this is actually some of the last work that we did, and because of COVID, this we did it in there. Um, and the leaves are humongously huge, it's, a, it's the most era. I mean, we did this collection, which was obviously a Venice collection, and and um, we haven't been able to launch it other than in virtual reality in the gallery, and we will probably next year show it in, in different places. This is one yeah. of the pieces. Yeah. yeah. Of course, there are so many other ones that, that, that we, we are not going to be able to talk about. But which are the, 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 in terms of artists, when you go around, how do you approach them? How do you find them? How do they, they come to you now? By now you're such a figure in the world of art, or you still I, go to wait. schools or things like that? I think it works two ways. I think, you know, I'll give you an example of Ian and Patrick. I mean, I, every artist there, I known them for, for a certain amount of time before I even worked with them. So there was a, 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 if you like, a thinking behind the idea that I would like to work with them rather, or, or they would like to work with me. Very, very seldom, although in the gallery, I have to invited curators sometimes to bring a group of young artists, and I do that every year. And they bring like 10 young artists to the gallery for maybe for a week, for 10 days to discover. But, but I mean, to, to take on young artists, you need, you need a structure for that. You, you need kind of another point of view because it's, 
it's not an easy thing to do, to, to take on every artist. I mean, and yet it would be great to have a website all the young artists are able to kind of put their work and then people pick them up and whatever. But my artists, I choose them, is very much a point of view. That is my point of view. And, 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 and I work with artists that I really believe in. Yeah. yeah. You know, when we see your exhibitions uh, outside your gallery, and we see, you know, the many of the contemporary artists of this time, you know, they're all in museums, thanks to you, because you have pushed the career, you have created, uh, awareness for all of us, you know, it's always a level of surprise, but it's always a level that is also a very much interest in nature, you know. I, I, it's, I, I hadn't thought about that, but you are kind of, it's, it's, it's true, I mean, it's like, I suppose everything comes from nature at the beginning, they draw line, I mean, however, straight lines came later, and if I go back, whether it's Michelle Ocadona, some way, or the he uses the computer, the forms, some of them they could be interpreted as a or so many other things. It's, it's not, um, you know what it, I come to me, you know, whether they design furniture or whether they design, they're all part of the same realm of art, artists. It's not really, you know, even, even Saha to some extent. I mean, if you think of Saha, I had drawings. They're just like an artist doing drawings. You know, so, so they all are very much art, design, architecture, one thing, one thing. Yeah. These are the paintings that uh, Barnaby is, is kind of like, is been developing. Barnaby has been growing very much from, from, um, uh, from very static, if you like, from almost like uh, objects onto painting. I mean, and it's been a process because he, he got the Royal College and he was doing product design, amazingly successful, incredibly witty, incredibly knowledgeable. And then he began to make his own sculpture. At the point when I took him on and sort of said, this is the moment, he had to make a choice. I sort of said, look, you either have to, to devote it to art and your work or product design. And he made that, that at the beginning. It was a little bit of time, you know, because it's like, that transition it has financial implications, but now I mean it's like I must sort of say work is great and is highly collectible, and and we are kind of working a lot with him. So Barnaby, you know, is also a young artist. You know, he's and a, his work is amazing too. He's a, he's now working on painting. Unbelievable. Yeah, Unbelievable. he's working. He's working on paintings which soon they will appear. I mean, it's, it's kind of he's going all the way. Barnaby. Yeah, I love this. You know, again, you know, I, I review the work and I review the work and I think animals, nature, contemporary materials. So you start, yeah. it is part of a, of a of constant research, I guess. And I would say that that keep alive the planet and the imagination of people. Mm. Well, I think, I think, um, I think we, we stimulate each other. I mean, it's like, if I don't like you know that, I'm going to sort of say I don't like it. But, but I think we know what we are talking about and we know the conversation. And also, I see the work in an artist is not just because of the name that I necessarily wish or want to work with them or they want with me. But I, I think I inspire them and I think the work that they do uh, with me, I think is, is great. I mean, this really is your stories about the chandelier that is endless. I mean, the, the women, the girls, the places that is in, you know, in the homes, you know, in, in, in enough. I mean, it's, uh, and it's a conversation piece. It's a conversational piece. What, what is the next step after Malta? Where are you going, David? Well, I'm already thinking I have to go back to London because COVID or no COVID, the reality is that, that we have to kind of like really get on the train again you know, on the plane, the train, it's up because we have to plan next year. Next year is going to be an important year at whatever level, whether it's going to be virtual, whether we are going to be Zoom uh, dialogues, but I think we have to work on all that now. And of course, I will take this month, but I'm already talking to artists long distance. I mean, we're discussing things. So planning for next year. Next year, I'm going to be showing one artist, Paul Morrison, which is a, as a painter, and, and the work was going to be shown this year, but it will be shown next year. And I'm super excited because he does incredible murals. 
incredible work. So there are new names that I'm going to be showing in the gallery next year. We are working on those collections. We are looking forward. And any plans to do exhibitions in America? Well, this is it. I think, I think we definitely want to do something in New York. And of course, New York has had what well, is having kind of like, but it will recover. These things, you know, it's like they happen and they don't happen. But we would like to kind of do something in New York. I mean, eminent. Yeah, that we will do something. We certainly need you. And also in Miami, perhaps you can come back after, I guess. Maybe love the idea. I love the idea. Years, 15 years you came to Miami. You, we, can, we can organize your own installation. You deserve to be Great. alone. It'll be a pleasure. We love to do it. Yeah. yeah. I really want to thank you very much, David, for your time. And, and again, you know, I, I'm talking from deep respect. You know, my, you. My, you have opened our eyes to many wonderful things. Keep surprising it, us. And I really, when you asked me to, to do this talk with you, I thought it was, I, I thank you very much. It's fantastic. Thank you. And I hope everybody that's been listening or, or joining or whatever, they've enjoyed. And if there's any questions, you can come back to me or to you and you may have to come out. Absolutely. It is all about you and everything that you do to keep inspiring us. And I hope you'll be safe. And I wish you the best. And I hope to see you very soon. Thank you. All my best. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye -bye.